Hello everyone, this is Mina. I am a speculative fiction writer for, from Romania and welcome back to our reading room. That is Bubu, who is now nine years old. Okay, for those of you who know me and uh, realize that I have been terribly, uh, I don't know, lazy of late with my book reviews and I know and I'm sorry. Uh, it's just that uh, with all the things going on and the development of the pandemic, when it's starting, it's over, it's starting, it's over. Uh, my motivation has been really, really low. So I, I really uh, didn't uh, have the energy uh, for any, I know, steady ongoing projects like the book reviews. Uh, even though a lot of times I was telling myself that I wanted to get back into things. But today I've decided to start to get back into things. And we're going to start with Annihilation by uh, Jeff Vandermeer. And this was actually, uh, I've recent, recently read a comment on YouTube on another uh, video requesting this. Actually, I think it was requested twice. And uh, I decided that, yes, it was a good way of getting back in the saddle. So here I am. Okay, Annihilation is part of um, a series, a trilogy, right now it's a trilogy, uh, by Jeff Vandermeer called Southern Reach Trilogy. And there are two other books, uh, accept, uh, I think it's Authority and Acceptance. And I have heard a rumor that there might be a fourth book coming. At least uh, I've seen an announcement, sort of announcement on Goodreads. So I've, I've seen uh, it. It has a Goodreads page, but it's just uh, the book. So it's no summary, no anything. So. I think it's either an unconfirmed rumor or something that is in the uh, very, very early stages of development. Okay, uh, anyway, I've only read Annihilation. I finished it uh, recently, like at the end of last week. And uh, I haven't read the other two yet, but uh, it's fine because uh, we can start the review of the first part. All right, uh, yeah. also, just so you know, uh, I'm putting on a Jeff Vandermeer playlist because we have like uh, five in this review. We have five re uh, book reviews from him. So uh, I'm putting them on a playlist so you people could find them more easily. So check that out. Okay, Annihilation is a very... I wouldn't say strange book. Actually, yeah, as far as Jeff Vandermeer is concerned, it's quite straightforward. It's like one of his most uh, straightforward books, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, it's uh, from the point of view of a biologist. That's all we know. She does not have a name, and I'll explain later why not. Uh, who goes together with... Uh, a psychologist, an anthropologist, and a surveyor in a, a strange sort of land where there are uh, an abandoned land that's called Area X. And uh, we know very little about uh, this Area X at first. Uh, we only know that it was abandoned, that there are weird plants and animals there, uh, that there is a lighthouse there uh, and later we find out there's something that uh, is technically a tunnel but uh, the main character the biologist keeps referring to it as a tower so uh, we don't really know what it is uh, what the construction is or if it is even a construction or something else saying more would be spoiling the book and uh, we know that this is not the first expedition, so that there were other uh, 11, in fact, expeditions before that. Uh, we know that in one expedition, uh, the members killed each other. And we also know that in the last expedition before uh, the one the biologist goes in, uh, goes on, uh, the members returned to their families. 
So this is what we're told at first. We're also told that there is some kind of border that they need to cross and the biologist does not remember what happens when they cross the border or if they cross any border at all uh, because uh, the psychologist hypnotizes them, the other uh, women. They're all women in this expedition because apparently every expedition varies in some ways. Later on we'll find out that the previous, on the previous expedition uh, they were all uh, men. Okay, uh, over there in Area X, things start to happen, weird things. For example, they head down uh, to the tunnel or tower and they notice some strange writing, uh, which is kind of like made out of spores, which kind of makes uh, the Southern Reach trilogy, or at least Annihilation, makes it a bit... Uh, related to uh, the City of Ambergris series uh, with the mushroom thingies and uh, as I said I have not read the other books yet to know what direction Vanderman wants to take. If he wants to tie this uh, to the Ambergris universe or if it's just uh, a recurring theme because uh, I've noticed that Vandermeer has some recurring themes like the one with parallel universes. I don't know uh, yet if this is going to be also about parallel universes. There's no mention of them in the first book. Okay, one of the things that uh, strikes me as uh, very, very uh, unique to this book is the voice of the character. And I have read some reviews on Goodreads and some questions wondering if uh, I know uh, the character might not be, I know, supposed to be on the spectrum or something because she seems uh, completely removed. And if she's not a cliched representation or not so cliched, I don't know, uh, because uh, she seems like completely detached, scientific, uh, presenting uh, more observations than feelings. She does present feelings at the time, but more, most of her ob observations are uh, extremely detached and uh, I think the main reason and somebody who reads the book carefully realizes that it's not just her personality before the training to go to Area X because yeah she was always an introvert she was always very science focused and very observation focused and a little bit lonely I, I, I wouldn't say lonely more like isolated introverted she was highly introverted. But uh, I think what needs to be realized is that when she was prepared for the expedition, her and the other, her colleagues, they were left with only their job title. So they were the biologist, the surveyor, the anthropologist. And uh, I think this was, their names were taken from them. So with their names, with their individuality, they became like the job, the expedition. That was all, all that matters and any uh, feelings, any emotions were like secondary. And uh, we later realized that this was because no one actually survived Area X while going there and that probably it was easier to kind of uh, get... Uh, I, uh, turn yourself into a more detached person to become like this person that only observes and not does not get involved in uh, especially emotionally and yeah the voice is completely different from all of other of Vandermeer's voices when, that he uses he uses first person a lot and uh, it's amazing that every time he uses first person, it's uh, a completely different character and a completely different voice. And this one is, uh, I think, his most detached one. A scientific, detached, cold, with just a very, very little hint of emotion. And that emotion that the biologist has is mostly related to uh, the natural world. So that's kind of 
she's very into nature and i think this also has to do with uh well vladimir himself being a uh, very uh eco-conscious and uh, this is probably one of the things this is one of the things that he uh, puts in this book and at the end you get this feeling that area x is like a place that where the natural the natural world is like trying to uh, reclaim a foothold in uh, what is now uh, almost completely human dominated uh, world okay the other thing is and again this is Another of Vandermeer's particularities that I absolutely love and that he does very well is his uh, penchant to like uh, use a narrator that is completely unreliable and uh, leave the reader at their mercy so that ultimately you you don't really know what exactly is happening and how much to believe that narrator because the biologist is an unreliable narrator that uh, <laughs> reveals things like very very gradually and that misleads the reader and sometimes lies to the reader because for example she mentions the 11th expedition the first time in a very casual detached manner and she talks about how they return to their families and later we find out that, wait, her husband was actually part of the 11th expedition. And when she says he returned, they returned to their families, they re her husband returned to her from Area X. And uh, yeah, that is, how do you not reveal this information the first time? How do you talk about that in the third person? Like, doesn't affect you. And then when she confesses that she admits that her Actually, she mentions, she doesn't admit anything, she just mentions it, that her husband was part of that uh, expedition. She quickly says, it, I'm not here because of him. So she, she's very firm in saying, uh, my husband uh, being part of the a member of the expedition has nothing to do with me being here, even though her husband returned and it wasn't, didn't feel like really him and uh, he eventually uh, died. All the members of the 11th expedition died in a military hospital and government facility, something like that. Uh, and it, she hints that the thing that returned was more a copy of her husband and not really him. And then when she says that she's not there because of her husband, later on, <laughs> Towards the end of the book, we find out that actually before leaving, her husband told her, if I don't return, promise you'll come and see what happened to us. Promise you'll take on an expedition of your, your own. So, yeah, <laughs> completely <laughs> misleading. And you wonder what exactly, uh, if, if she's not telling the truth about this, what else is she not telling the truth about? Also... Uh, in the middle of all this, uh, she gets uh, infected with something from Area X and her facts become a bit twisted then. So actually, we're following a narrator who is like the epitome of unliable narrator. And I, I th for one, love every moment. And I like that uh, <laughs> Vandermeer has enough faith in his readers to allow them to uh, get involved in this game because it is a game and uh, most of the times reading Vandermeer is like playing a game and it's extremely enjoyable and I like it that it's the same in Area X even though like I said Area X is his most tame most that I've read or uh, most like and I, I'm not using tame and normal as uh, negative things because it's still brilliantly written and brilliantly told. But uh, yeah, it's, I think it's most action driven and uh, less unusual novel. But uh, you shouldn't take this as a bad thing. Sorry, that I have read because uh, 
I haven't read Peculiar Peril yet to know what that is about, but I think that's Young Adult. And I think there are others that I haven't read. Uh, I've also read Hummingbird Salamander, but I am sad to say that I was kind of disappointed. It was slow-paced. So when I <laughs> mention Vandermeer's novels, I don't refer to this one. Uh, so when comparing Southern Reach with the rest of his novels, uh, I, I steer clear of Hummingbird Salamander until I'm uh, able to, I know, come to terms with it. Maybe it's an acquired taste. But uh, Annihilation still has that Vandermeer feel, so it's the atmosphere, the place Area X is like completely alive uh, in various ways, and I can't tell you all the ways because that would be spoiling it, but it's uh, the atmosphere, the, it's like you're there, and you're there through the eyes of a character that is kind of flawed, uh, very detached, uh, she only at the end she gets a little bit more emotional and uh, and kind of unreliable so you, at some point you don't know if what she's saying is true and because area x has an effect on her mental state and also because she used to be uh, hypnotized by the psychologist you do not know even if what she is seeing is always true because for example there's the thing with the tower her colleagues say it's a tunnel her husband's journal that she eventually discovers in area x also describe it as a tunnel and she insists on seeing it as a tower so the reader kind of like doesn't know what to choose to believe is it a tunnel is it a tower what exactly uh is it and why does she see it as a tower and this is never explained actually how come she sees it as a tower but uh, yeah uh it's like it's it's a, it's a mental exercise reading annihilation and uh, it's uh, it was a terribly enjoyable one especially because uh for some reason uh, i've read a lot of books lately that i haven't enjoyed so I, I think I have, uh, not right now, so in the summer I've read some extremely good books, but I think starting from end of July, uh, beginning of August, I've had bad luck choosing books. So I can't say I connected with either, but, and now I'm starting to get back into good books. So uh, it's like hit or miss. <laughs> most of the time <laughs> but yeah anyway uh for those of you who haven't read annihilation do read it it's very good and it's as far as a vandermeer novel is concerned it's easier to uh, digest than let's say a city of saints and madman or even uh, i don't know born which might be a bit strange or dead astronauts which uh I have to say, was a bit too strange, even for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But Southern Reach, uh, at least Annihilation, is quite good. I've heard they've made a movie of it in 2018. I haven't seen it. Anyway, I've heard uh, there were some changes with uh, Vandermeer's Blessing, but then again, you know, uh, once you acquire the rights, uh, to once they, they acquire rights to a writer's uh, uh, work, uh, to a writer's book, you just, I know, I don't think they have, the writers have much choice of saying no to any approach in the ad adaptation. So, <laughs> I don't know how much, but I did notice that uh, when I was reading about the movie, I did notice that uh, the characters had names. And uh, I think that takes, I mean, I know you can't have a movie with somebody called the biologist. I, I understand that, that you can't really reach a wide audience with that kind of approach. But it still takes a lot out of the book because 
you know it, it was that sort of identity uh, stripping uh, action that makes the character what she is so yeah uh, I think it takes a lot if uh, she has a name because if she doesn't uh, and the, the thing is that the biologist doesn't uh, see it as a wrong thing that she doesn't have a name that she no longer has it that she's only her job from now until i don't know eternity because yeah anyway uh it was a very good book i really enjoyed it and it was great to get back in the saddle so i hope uh to see you again as soon as possible and have a very great day goodbye